Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on Sunday the 14th of March. It's the fourth Sunday in Lent and it's also Mothering Sunday. I'm Claire Dyson, the Associate Vicar for the Minster with St Matthews. I'll be leading the service this morning and bringing you a reflection on our readings. Liz Horder will do our readings for us and Margaret Bales will be leading our intercessions. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And our first hymn this morning is Great is Thy Faithfulness. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, 
So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 27 The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing I have asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek his will in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall hide me in his shelter. In the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me and set me high upon a rock. And now shall he lift up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy upon me and answer me. My heart tells of your word. Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor cast your servant away in displeasure. You have been my helper, and leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of those who lie in wait for me. Deliver me not into the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me and those who breathe out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. God, our light and our salvation, illuminate our lives that we may see your goodness in the land of the living and looking on your beauty may be changed into the likeness of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And this will now bring us our Old Testament reading. The first reading today is taken from 1 Samuel, chapter 16, beginning at the first verse. Samuel anoints David. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint me for the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. And when he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they meet him, met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height. For I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then made Shammah pass by. And, but Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, 
Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. He will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in his presence. Anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Canticle. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God, the Most High, the Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth in all their glory, all things tremble with awe at your presence before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are God Most High. You are full of compassion, long-suffering and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. O God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. And now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O God, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my transgressions. Unworthy as I am, you will save me according to your great mercy. For all the host of heaven sings your praise, and your glory is for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God, the Most High, the Almighty. And Liz will now read us our New Testament reading. The second reading is taken from John, chapter 9 beginning at the first verse. Jesus heals a man born blind. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. This so happened that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spat on the ground and made some mud with saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means scent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbours and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claim that it was. As I said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked. I don't know, he said. They brought him to the Pharisees, the man who had been blind. Now the day which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Liz. The events of this last year have brought a sense of unreality to everyday life. Mothering Sunday would usually see us in church, sharing bunches of spring flowers and reminding ourselves of the love of God that we find in each other. But at the moment, we're asked not to meet others outside of our own household. Our church services have been suspended 
We can't meet as we would like to, to celebrate and share our lives together. Mothering Sunday has to a large extent been taken over by Mother's Day, something altogether different. And so it's good to remind ourselves of what Mothering Sunday really means. It's a celebration of the mothering that we receive from the church, so called because of the tradition that those who worked away from home would on this day return to their mother church and their family, taking a small gift very often for their mother. In our modern age, the emphasis on the role of mother can be painful for many. Painful memories of lost dreams, fractured relationships, death of a loved one, or feeling forgotten. It is important, therefore, for the church to reclaim what the mothering is that the church can and does offer. It's a role that each of us, as members of the church family, have a part in. It's a place where we can have a sense of security and love. Something we all need considering the chaos we've been living in in the past year. There's no previous experience to look to for advice or help on how to manage the situation we find ourselves in. At the start of the book of Genesis, God was faced with chaos. He didn't waste time describing the chaos or analysing it and discussing whose fault it was. Instead, he created light and following that, a whole new world. In our reading from John's Gospel, we're being asked to understand that Jesus is doing the work of the one who sent him. He is establishing a new world of light and healing. After the chaos and darkness of Good Friday and Holy Saturday, he will bring a new creation into being with the light of the first Easter morning. New creation always seems puzzling. In the story, there's an assumption that there is a link between disability and previous sin. Thinking like that is trying to hold onto a belief in God's justice. If you believe in a God who's all powerful and all loving, for someone to be born with a disability seems unfair. So to get around this problem, they're suggesting that what seemed unfair actually wasn't. A sin was being punished. Jesus firmly resists any such analysis. The world is stranger and darker than that, and the light of God's powerful, loving justice shines more brightly than that. Being born with a disability does not mean you or your parents have sinned. Something much more mysterious and far more hopeful is going on. The chaos and misery of this world is the raw material out of which our loving and wise God is making his new creation. When Jesus heals the man, it's a moment in the gospel when God's truth and the world's life come crashing together. John's gospel is pushing us forward towards a time when God will make all things new. Change and new things are things that produce fear, though. The Pharisees and the parents of the man who's been healed are afraid. The Pharisees are afraid that something new is coming to it within their Judaism. Someone's claiming to act in the name of God, starting to crack their system top to bottom. The parents are fearful because they know the level of threat there is against anyone who is saying that Jesus is the Messiah. In one of John's letters, he says that perfect love casts out fear. The Gospel tells us the different ways in which this is happening. How Jesus is bringing God's healing and light into the world. Love and healing are all part of the new creation that is happening through Jesus. In his death and resurrection, 
Jesus open up, opens up God's love in a way that has no boundaries, familial, physical, national, or spiritual. Somehow, he redefines what it means to be a family. This is a sobering message at any time, but one that has particular relevance for these times that we find ourselves in. Church is not just about caring for those we find within its walls, whom we've come to know and love. It's about recognising that all are made in the image of God. All are members of the family of God. The church should be the place where we are nurtured and cared for and sustained as we go out to nurture and care for others. As we're mothered, so we mother others. In this time of isolation and anxiety, we need to demonstrate our love. We may not be able to be physically with someone, to hold their hand or tell them in person how much they matter. But we can pick up the phone. We can write a letter. We can be mindful of each other and pray for each other. And through the love and care we're showing each other, we can show those who don't yet know Jesus the wonder of the new creation that God is bringing about. The Benedictus. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who's come to his people and set them free. He's raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Margaret will now lead us in our intercessions. Let us pray. Trusting in the Holy Spirit to guide us. We bring before God all parts of the world where there is war, persecution, along with all people of the world who are hurting due to COVID-19. We trust you, Lord, to bring peace and healing to your people as you did to the blind man. We thank you for our Queen, Government and their advisers as they make wise decisions on the way out of lockdown and to bring the virus under control. We thank you for all NHS staff and those who have supported them in the work of caring for all those who have required hospital treatment and in delivering the vaccination program. Enable us all to support them by following the guidelines we are given, however restricting we find them. Lord, we thank you for all the staff of the Minster with some apples and the volunteers who have supported them in the ministry of the world, pastoral ministry and admin during this last year. 
we ask you to guide the staff and the church family as we move forward in ministry in the coming months. We bring before the Lord all our church family and those who are not, not but join us online who are physically, mentally, emotionally ill, out of work, on further, or whose jobs are at risk. Lord, in a few moments of silence, we bring to you those we know who are sick, remembering especially Karen Belcher and Jennifer Jones. We thank you for your healing presence. The college for the fourth Sunday of Lent. Merciful Lord, absorb your people from their offences, that through your bountiful goodness we may be delivered from the chains of those sins which by our frailty we have committed. Grant this, Heavenly Father. For Jesus Christ's sake, our blessed Lord and Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forevermore. Amen. now have our second hymn, Amazing Grace.
Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this morning for morning prayer on a Sunday. Next week we will be back in our building for a service. So we are hoping to record the service from there. Um, if all the technology goes well, we'll be able to live stream it to you as it happens. Um, if it doesn't work, then we will record it and publish it later on in the day. So if you're feeling able and would like to come to the Minster next Sunday, we will be there at 11 o'clock for a service of communion. If you'd rather stay at home, then please do look for this service on YouTube, either available through our website or directly through YouTube. Goodbye. <laughs>